Uh, most people develop relationship with the soil only after they die. But it's very important to develop relationship with the soil when you're alive. I would say especially now, with this virus around, believe me, those of you who are in some way in contact with the soil, here we call this uh, Prutvi Prema Seva, that means getting involved with the soil in a very loving manner. Well, your ability to live, your ability to resist these kind of invasions upon your life will be greatly, greatly enhanced. It's not just enough if you live, it's important that you live strong. Living strong does not mean you grow big muscles and dominate somebody. Living strong means here life happens big. For this, you need a, a body which treats the entire planet as its extension, which it is. So, uh, it's very important that you bring this, all of you who are here at the Isha Yoga Center, we will set up some processes for you so that every one of you, at least once in three days, your hands and feet are in the soil, very important. <laughs> and wherever, wherever else you are, if you have a small patch of a garden, or uh, you can volunteer that you will work in somebody else's garden. Believe me, yes, they will get free labor, but don't think they are getting more, you are getting much more because you being connected with the soil will make a phenomenal difference for your… for the way your physical body functions. Put your hands into the soil, very important. Otherwise, those of you who are too well-to-do but don't want to be seen doing any work be because it may create a wrong image for your affluence, you can have a mud bath. Yes, that is also one way. <laughs> Just bring forty to fifty percent of the food in its raw form, that means it's alive. It must be a live cell, it can be a vegetable, it can be a fruit, it can be a nut, it can be sprouted gram. At least forty to fifty percent, the food that you eat must be alive. You eat dead food and you want to live, this is a little difficult thing to do because you have to raise the dead now. When you cook the food, to digest the food, all the ingredients necessary for digestion are not in the body alone. The food also brings these enzymes. When you cook the food, you are largely destroying these enzymes. Minus the enzymes when you eat, now the body has to struggle to reconstruct that part that has been destroyed and then only it can digest. Normally first one, one and a half hours after eating, it tends to take the body down. After that slowly, it recovers. Have you noticed this? So food is for energy, but we are making the food in such a way that uh, it takes away energy in the first one and a half hours, only after that slowly it comes back. Anyway, however good your digestive process is, still you can never reconstitu reconstitute all the enzymes that we have destroyed by cooking. Only partly we can do that. One simple thing can be just a shower, always to shower before you go to bed, it'll make a lot of difference. In this weather, maybe cold showers are difficult, so you go for lukewarm showers, don't go for hot showers in the night, go for lukewarm showers, it makes you alert. So you will think, oh, I cannot sleep. It doesn't matter, you will sleep fifteen, twenty minutes or half an hour later, but you will sleep better because it will take away certain things. When you shower, it is not just the dirt on the skin that you're taking away. Have you noticed if you're very tense and anxious, whatever, just a shower, you came out and feels like almost the burden has been taken away from you? Have you not noticed this? So it's not just about washing the skin, a whole lot of things happen 
when water flows over your body. This shower is a very rudimentary bhuti shuddhi because over seventy percent of your body is actually water. If you run water over it, a certain purification happens which is beyond cleaning the skin. You must take enormous care about the water because it's seventy-two percent and it has tremendous memory. If I open this water or even without opening, if I say something to this water, it remembers. There has been lot of experiments in this direction. So, uh, if you take this water from wherever the waterworks is and pump it to your house, let's say it went through fifty bends, forced, pumped forcefully with a certain force, which naturally is done, and you are living on twelfth floor of the apartment, so further forced up. Now they are saying, if it goes through fifty bends, about sixty percent of the water has turned poisonous. Immediately when it comes in the tap, if you take it and immediately drink it, it will work as poison in your system. If you take it and hold it for some time, it will undo itself again. Because the poisoning is not chemical, it is molecular. Molecular changes are happening, no chemical changes happening. This is why traditionally your grandmother always told you, always you must gather the water, keep it overnight in your house, in a properly cleaned vessel with vibhuti and kunkum on it and one flower on it. Yes or no? In traditional homes, only tomorrow morning you drink it. Not as soon as it comes inside your house, you don't drink it because it carries all kinds of memories. In very traditional homes, people every day do puja to the water pot. Yes? And you never drink the water as soon as it comes. You keep it, give it enough time to undo itself from whatever nonsense it has gathered so that it is suitable for you when you drink it. Water you must take care because it's seventy-two percent. It's more, it's first class, you know, more than passing mark. Empty stomach and hunger are two different things. Hunger means your energy levels start dropping. But empty stomach is a good thing. In the yogic sciences, today modern science also is coming in line with this. But what we know by our experience, you will spend a billion dollars to come there. Because research is all about how many million dollars, that's how it is. Your body and your brain works at its best only when your stomach is empty. So we always make sure we eat in such a way, how much ever we eat, our stomach must be always empty within two to two and a half hours time maximum. So we go to bed hungry always. People think they cannot sleep, they can sleep. So, minimum eight hours gap is what is recommended in yoga. Between one meal and the next meal, there must be an eight hour space. If you do this, you will see half your problems of health, whatever you have health problems, minimum fifty percent will go away.